Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be finding for the power series representation for the function 1 divided by 1 plus x squared and also determine the radius of convergence. To find for the power series representation for this function, I'm going to use another function which is going to be 1 divided by 1 minus x. Um, so this function, 1 divided by 1 minus x, we know that this is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the power of 3 and so on. And we're going to take the derivative on both sides. So the derivative of 1 minus, I mean 1 divided by 1 minus x, which is also equal to 1 my one minus to the power, one minus x to the power of negative one. If we take the, this derivative, then we would have negative one minus x to the power of negative two. But using chain rule, we, ha we have to multiply negative one again. So the negative and negative will just cancel out. So just erase both of those. And then on the right side, we, if we take the derivative, we would have 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared. And then we would have 4x to the power of 3 and so on. And now notice that this is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x squared. This is really similar to our original function, right? 1 divided by 1 plus x squared, except we have a negative instead of positive here. So what we're going to do is replace all x values with negative x. So we would have a positive here, one plus x squared. One plus x squared, if we replace x with negative x, all of it, then we would have on the right side, one minus two x, plus 3x squared since the negative gets squared so it's positive and minus 4x cubed since the negative to the power of 3 is still a negative and a plus dot 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 and now we found we turned our function into pol in terms of polynomials and now we can find for the power series representation now um, Okay, so we would have two, oh, I mean, no, I'm sorry, n times x to the power of one, I mean, n minus one times negative one to the power of n minus one, right? And that would be when n is equal to one. But if we want to start the n value with zero, the first term, then for everything that we have for the n value, so like here and here and here, we would have to add one, add one after that. So here we would have n plus one times x to the power of n plus one minus one. So that's just n. And times negative one to the power of n plus one minus one. So that's just n again. So these two are exactly the same, except we just changed the first terms and just a couple of things here. So now that we have found the power series representation for this function, we can solve for the radius of convergence. And in order to do that, we're going to use the root test. I'll come all the way over here. We're going to use the root test which then we would have to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n to the power of one divided by n. a sub n in our, fun in our series is this, but we don't even have to worry about the negative one to the power of n because we're up we're going to take the absolute value of it. So we just don't even really have to t um, think about that. 
So the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1. Oh, no. We can't just get rid of the absolute value. Of n plus 1 times n times n to the power of n and to the power of 1 divided by n. And remember, the negative, n, negative 1 to the power of n just disappeared since we have the absolute value. And now let's put it in here. So the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 to the power of 1 divided by n times x to the power of n divided by n, which is 1. So you won't have to bother writing anything. And now let's take this limit. If we take this limit, then for this part, we'll have infinity to the power of zero. And uh, uh, my brother David made a video about this, so go, so if you don't know why infinity, infinite to the power of zero is equal to one, then go check that out. So if we take this limit, then we would have one times x, so, well, x to absolute value of x. And now we're trying to find for when it's convergent. So in the root test, it's convergent when whatever we get for the limit is less than one. So we're going to set the absolute value of x less than one. Now, so just by this, now we now know that the radius is equal to one, right? Because we'll have, we'll have it like this. And we don't know yet if it's also convergent at x is equal to negative one and one, but we don't even have to test that out because we're only finding for the radius of convergence, not the interval of convergence. So we, know, we now know that the radius of convergence is one. And we have found everything we need to find. Sorry, I'm back. So I wanted to explain a bit more about this part because I said that this is infinity to the power of zero, which is equal to one. But I would like to explain that that's not always the case, although it is in this case. So like, if we put in n as infinity, then we would have infinity to the power of zero. And in this case, this is equal to one. But a counter example of this not being true would be the limit as n approaches infinite of n to the power of n of 1 divided by n. Because if we put in, if we put in infinity at, if we put in n as infinity, then we would have infinity to the power of 0. But then again, if we simplify this first, then put in the n as infinity, then we would have infinity to the power of 1, which is just infinity. So I'm just saying that this isn't always true, and this is a counter example. And also I'd like to explain why if we take this limit of n plus 1 to the power of 1 divided by n, why it's equal to 1. So let's say that y is equal to n plus 1 to the power of 1 divided by n. If we, then if we take ln on both sides, then we would have, well, the 1 divided by n would come down times the ln of n plus 1. And then this is equal to Oh wait, no, sorry, wait, this is 2. No, this is supposed to be n, not 2. I was a little bit confused. So ln of n plus 1 divided by n. And since we're taking the limit, since we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity, we would have to uh, use 
the little pitas rule for, I mean, since we get infinity divided by infinity. If we use Lopita's rule, then we would have, well, for the bottom, we would have one. And if we take care of up for the numerator, we would have n plus one on the bottom and just one on the top. And this is, this would be equal to zero. And that means that ln y is equal to zero, which would mean that y is equal to one since ln y ln 1 is equal to 0. So if we put in y is equal to 1 here, then we would have, then that means that the limit as n approaches infinite of n plus 1 to the power of 1 divided by n is equal to y, which is equal to 1. So that's why if we take this limit, it will equal to 0, I mean 1. Okay, thank you for watching now. Um, now this will be the end of the video. I just explained why infinity to the power of zero is not always equal to one when we when we take the limit of something. And I also showed a counterexample and I also showed why the limit of n plus one to the power of n divided by uh, one divided by n would be equal to one. Thank you for watching everyone. Have a great day.